Excuse me, sir. Do you happen to know when the train arrives? The postmaster said it's usually no more than an hour late, so it should be here any moment. I got a tougher question for you. Uh, pardon? Will this train get me close to Albuquerque? I'm afraid that's an ocean away, and even to the ocean you've got a ways to go. Thank you. Ever since I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque, I can't get my bearings. The things I've seen, sir. Places I've been. I just can't get to Albuquerque. I wanted to send two telegrams, one to Warsaw and one to Paris. Mr. Shulsky, I was meant to send for you when the driver came to get the mail. My condolences about your father. Do you still want to send something? <sighs> Did you come to say goodbye to me? More like to share my fear. Your condition yesterday, after the fight with that... Bukovac. He troubled me. I don't think my treatments are having a long-lasting effect. And you don't look the best. Do you feel all right? I've just heard that my father is dead. My condolences. After your treatment, when I was hallucinating, I saw him. I heard his voice for the first time in years. I'm sure it was him. A strange feeling. Maybe he came to say goodbye. Maybe it was his last chance to speak to you. A prophecy. I hope not. What do you intend to do now? Just a moment ago, I was thinking about Vienna, or Budapest, and going on from there to Paris, but now... I've got to get to Warsaw first. What about you? Thanks to you. I don't think I have anything else to do here. I had a little time to think about what I saw in your mind. Tell me, Victor. Have you ever seen a human skull cracked open on the cobblestones? Your question sounded like a threat. Because it is, for all of us. I have. The skull of Franz Ferdinand himself, with his brain spilling out onto the sidewalk. I also saw the white steps in Odessa running with blood. A battlefield blanketed in lethal fog, with faceless beings emerging from it. This hasn't happened yet, but I saw it as clearly as I see you now. Thanks to you, I know that I can stop it. I know that I am part of history, and I can change it. Even at the cost of scorn, contempt, or my life. You promised me a favor, so Warsaw sounds perfect.
Warszawa! Warszaw! Warsaw! Last stop, Warsaw. Time to wake up. It's clouding over. The weather is like my mood. Aside from the circumstances of the funeral bringing you back, you hadn't thought of ever returning here? I hate this city. It always makes me think of the stench of vodka, sweat and urine, corruption, poverty, and trust me, no justice but street justice. I'm sure something must have changed since you left. But probably not for the better. What about the people? Those close to you? You'll never miss them? The only person I consider close is my sister. But Varsovians? Let's see. Workers are striking. They want to take advantage of the Tsar's visit to Orsi. The protests are being violently suppressed. Last week, around a dozen people were killed. Polish Socialist Party militants attacked a train. They stole money, bonds, and explosive materials. They're also suspected of robbing a transport of... Dutch pomade? The Socialists in Warsaw must look pretty sharp then. Further along, we've got murders, muggings, and poverty. The newspapers feed on sensation. Remember that in darkness, even a small spark can be seen clearly. Even I can feel hope from all the people riding with us. Can't you? Even without my powers, I can tell that hope is bringing people here from all three partitions. Miners, steel workers, governesses, maids, speculators, thieves. I've gotten to read a few of our fellow passengers' possessions, and I know that Hope can have many faces. Will you share that knowledge with me? There's a terrified woman riding with us. She's either running away or in hiding. I think that gentleman is smuggling something, because excitement is all mixed up with guilt inside them. And this dandy, he's going whoring. If there's something I've learned in life, Victor, it's never to neglect the whores. Warsaw and Obeline, welcome to Warsaw. I think the time's come to ask where you plan to stay. I'll let you know when I come up with something. People unite, empires fall.
Why such a crowd? The circus has come to town. These are troubled times. Brothers turn against brothers. Russia has had enough bloodshed. The violence must stop. When socialists attempt to divide Russia and her subject nations, to dent the sword that smote the enemy at Grunwald, this demands my decisive action. Thus, by my grace, I hereby appoint as Governor General of Warsaw, Georgi Antonovich Skawon. A butcher. Not a popular guy, I presume. I see you ain't from here. That swine keeps a photo album of all the folks he's had shot at the Citadel. Before and after execution. Well, The time for leniency and indulgence is over. From the moment this office is bestowed on me. All forces hostile to the subjects of Greater Russia will have any further right to exist. None! Whether it be brutal socialist subversives, communists, Jews, or other satanic provocators. He sure knows how to unite a crowd. Pardon me. Are you Polish? Yes, I feel Polish. My name's Victor. Wanda. This is Russia here. Like it or not, Warszawa! Premia Terora! Zakonsuos! Idi na chuj! My first decision as Governor General of Warsaw... Arrestovac. Great heroes and their sense of timing. Of course, now they're the first ones in the fight. Samo bladanie, Pulyaki. We want that rebel. The Lautmar. Damn. What happened? Be a gentleman. Please kneel and tie my shoe. That seems more like a job for the servants, young lady. Go ahead. Look down. Can I ask you a tiny favor? The Russians can't find out about this. The military is just looking for an excuse to suppress the crowd. And these workers are dreaming of thrashing a Russian gendarme. Either one of you confesses to disturbing the peace, or of Sieg Zabirai. We'll take you all in. You can't handle all of us. Can you get us out of here? I think I'm open to any kind of suggestion. With a book like that, I'd find out what would convince one of these bastards to let us go. Or I'd take on that self-appointed leader of the proletariat. Interesting strategy. Who are you, really? A damsel in distress. Those don't usually hide ammunition in their stockings. Can I explain it to you another time? For instance, I could disclose to a soldier that you came here with ammunition under your skirt. Maybe we should see who they believe. A respected lady of Warsaw, or a common magician who just a hundred years ago would have been burned at the stake. Well, since you asked so nicely... I'm going to take a look around.
Pardon me, gentlemen. The crowd has received the order. For now, zero response. We'll give them a moment. To arrest them all, book them, interrogate them. Gospody will be home in November. Gentlemen, please forgive me. Maybe there's a faster way to get this situation resolved. Back off, Poriak, or we'll start shooting. Paniatno, Skrom, Dovai. Sergeant, I didn't want to do this, but my name is Viktor Shulski. Shulski or Smolski, I don't care. We'll make an example of you for the rest of these bastards.
Name? Shulski. Victor. One of those Shulskis? Yes. My condolences. Now, profile. Thank you. What you pissing in the bucket for, asshole? Where else am I supposed to? Brown in the bucket, whiz on the wall. You better remember that, too. That bucket's gonna last you guys till tomorrow. Can I use the phone? What are you staring at, Ganef? I don't know what that means. Quit squealing. First time in the big city? Have some respect if you don't know who you're running your mouth at. What did they put such a swell in jail for? What about you guys? Sonny, I've still been running the protection racket with Crook at the Ruzhitsky Bazaar. My dad used to work for him. But that was back in the day. Apart from that, I stay straight. I only hassle the Ruskies when I get a little loaded. And I'm with the Shivs. Bullshit! You ain't with the Shivs. Don't you go talking crap about the Shivs, cause I know them. You better give a fuller explanation, cause I lose respect real quick. I'm sensitive about folks like that. Who are you from? My name's Viktor Shulski, and I work on my own behalf. All right. Respect. First of all, I am a Thaumaturge. Now them, I got respect for. I know one really decent Jew from Povishla, who's a wizard too. How about you? You got a foreskin or what? Is my foreskin any of your fucking business? Well, no. I, I was just... Schmuck. But you don't look like much of a Warsaw lad. I'm just here for my father's funeral. I hope you don't miss the funeral toasts. Welcome to Warsaw. I wouldn't call you a master strategist. You got away from the station, so theoretically, we achieved our goal. You're not losing your sense of humor. I guess this isn't your first time in a place like this, is it? You'd better tell me if you managed to get rid of your ammunition. If I hadn't, I'd already be locked up at the Citadel. I admit your behavior did successfully distract the Ruskies. You're welcome. All right, then. What's such a gorgeous, hairy mug doing in a crummy place like this? We've got a little time to kill. Maybe now you can tell me more about yourself. You seem to know your way around this setting. You have been here often? I'll take that as a compliment. And sure, sometimes, if the cause demands it. What cause? Let's say I know certain folks who'd find poles like you useful. Dealers in stolen Dutch pomade? Donut connoisseurs. They met at Burke Rotblitz's cafe. What exactly do your friends do? I'd be glad to tell you, over coffee and jam donuts. I'm afraid all of these screws might have more questions and want to keep you here longer. Then you won't just miss out on the pastries, but also an adventure worthy of a great cause. 
Shulsky. I see you won't be hanging out here long either. Cholsky, this yours? That's right. Then take it and get out of here. Can I ask why the sudden change of plans? Anyone I should thank? If he wants to, he'll tell you himself. Thank you.
I'm sure you don't remember me. My name's Hayat, Mordechai Hayat. I wanted to offer my condolences. Thank you. Please, forgive my prying. I know Mr. Shulsky took nitroglycerin for his heart, but how did he pass away? Was that his cause of death? His heart? Why are you so interested in my father's cause of death? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone. I'm sure you want to bid farewell to your father. I think I ought to arrest you, Taumaturge. I haven't done anything, officer. What's the problem? I barely recognize you either. You still haven't figured out who I am? Don't be surprised. The last time we saw one another was 20 kilos ago. <laughs> Uncle Veronian? I will not keep you. That guy's probably all alone back there, among those vultures circling Stasio. I'm sure she'll be glad to see you. Go on. We'll talk later. Sister? Victor. I'm so glad you came. I wasn't sure if my telegram had reached you. I'm glad to. How are you holding up? All oh, this caught me off guard, but... For now, I don't have time to think things through calmly. Look at yourself. What happened? Have you written to Mother? Yes, but... What can you expect? You know what Nadia is like. It was never her style to show up for family events like this. It's getting late. And we've still got the reading of Papa's will ahead of us at home. And I'll leave you two alone. I suppose you've got your own matters to clear up. There's no way you can escape to now, is there, Father? I didn't mean to interrupt. May I take a moment of your time? Have you been eavesdropping like that for long? <laughs> All my life. I came to pay my respects to the dead. Stanislav and I were acquainted. You might say I knew everything about your father. Mr. Viktor Shulsky, isn't it? Your absence from Warsaw has happily come to an end, I hope. With all due respect, this is my personal business. It was my father who knew you, not me. True. Please forgive me. I meant no harm. Again, my condolences. I didn't catch your name. My name's Konechkin. Ivan Konechkin. Goodbye. Such interesting friends you had. <sighs> I, I guess I'm more tired than I thought. Great grandmother Yosefina, a thaumaturge. Grandpa Nikodem, a thaumaturge. I barely remember him.
We can go. The hardest thing was getting the lid of the urn. The scattering I could handle. You can play the clown, but I know how much this has cost you. I'm glad you went. Love at a funeral? Eros postmortem? Is it suitable for a young lady in mourning to fraternize with bachelors? Constantia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Could I ask for a brief comment? Faina. Thank you. And you, sir? We're twins, my dear lady. The Shulskis reunited. You don't look like a horrid cripple. Why did you leave Warsaw so quickly? Don't tell her anything. She'll write whatever she wants anyway. And we'd better get going. I can sort it out, but it might cause you some trouble. It's not worth getting your hands dirty over. Get out of here! Or I might decide you're attacking an Imperial official, and you'll wake up tomorrow in the Citadel. Are you threatening me, Judge? I'm actually spurring you from him. Would you rather try your luck with a Taumaturg? Come on, children. I'm sure my Pietia is already waiting for us at home. I'd love to see my cousin. Are you coming with us? Thanks. Get in. I'm sure the lawyer is already waiting for us.
young Mr. Shulsky. After all these years, all these years, goodness gracious, you're drenched. Good evening, Grazinka. Evening, evening. My, you're soaked. Come to the kitchen now. You can warm up by the stove. And that drunken judge, maybe you can drag him out too. Where's my sister? In the study, already waiting with the lawyer. She said you were running late. Should I make you some cocoa, master? It would warm you up a little. Make an extra creamy one for Ligia. Oh, I won't skimp on her. Now, your sister's putting a brave face on all this, but she's really having a hard time. It's lovely to see you again. But that's enough jabber for now. I've got the guests and the cocoa, and I've got to whip up some food for you all later. We'll talk soon. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. I already failed to recognize someone once today, but you look familiar. Well, I should think so. I was the victim of one of your starling hunts. Voronins must not be very memorable, cousin. Pietia, forgive me, and for shooting you as well. Ha, huh. how are you doing? Just some heart problems, not a subject for today. I'm sorry about Uncle Stanislav. Forgive me for not coming to the funeral. I can't bear cemeteries. We'll have to meet up again. Goodbye. Oh, I'm glad you're here. I thought I'd have to drink alone. So many goodies laid out for the guests. Having trouble picking something for yourself, Judge? But this was Stasio's. It was special. Amber liqueur with quinces. I think you mean quince liqueur with amber, right? If it's not here, I'm sure it's in the basement. But I won't grope around down there in the dark now. I've got my hands full. Now, I don't want to trouble you either. Victor, could you track down a little bottle for your uncle? I suppose I'm obligated to accept this mission. <laughs> Good lad. 
A nephew like you is a treasure. How did it go? Mission accomplished? I think this is the one Uncle wanted. Yes. This is our little funeral battle. We would meet in Stasha's study after every funeral we went to and raised a toast to the dead. And recently, we've been seeing one another more and more at such events. More and more. But this time, even he has left me. So, to an easy death, as Stasio and I used to say. <laughs> How did he die? Hasn't Ligia told you? I haven't even had the chance to ask. He didn't suffer. But such images in the memory are better saved for later. I'd prefer to remember him as he was alive. What then? Am I drinking alone? I suppose there's no reason to bear grudges or be angry, is there? Pistachio? To an easy death. Familiar faces keep vanishing from my life. Stasio and my Helena before him. I miss my little darling. I miss them both. Well, obligation fulfilled. Shall we get to the reading of the will? At the funeral, there was this sad Jewish fellow, Mordechai Hayat. Do you know him, uncle? He worked for Stanislav, but that was a long time ago. I don't know him more than that. So, shall we collect our inheritance? Yes, let's find out what my father hasn't left me. Let's begin if everyone is ready. Would you all please take a seat? Ladies and gentlemen, by the power of my office vested in me by the grace of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of All Russia, I hereby testify. Mr. Shulsky's last will and testament were prepared several years ago in the presence of Zaslav Fedorov, Esquire, that is, myself. My last will and testament recorded in the year of our Lord, 1888. In the name of the Holy Trinity, Amen. Therefore, my first irrevocable wish is to appoint as executrix of this will my daughter, Ligia Schulzka. Immediately after my death, an inventory shall be conducted in full accordance with the law. After completing the inventory, all my personal movables will be sold at public auction. And let the funds raised thereby be donated on the anniversary of my death to the beggars near the cemetery. The administration of the remainder of my fortune I leave without restriction, to the person of my daughter, Ligia. 
I'm not even getting a teaspoon. All movables and immovables relating to the family enterprise I entrust to the care and administration of my daughter. I do not prescribe a method of administering them. I merely offer her one piece of advice. I wish that the business should be conducted with modesty, prudence and honesty, as I have conducted it my whole life. A joke to the very end. <laughs> to my brother-in-law and oldest friend, Alexander Voronin, I wish to leave the following. My collection of muskets and two revolvers dating to the uprising in memory of our first meeting. Stasio, I will have plenty to do in my retirement. Enjoy your retirement. Now, Mr. Fedorov, what did my father leave my mother? Hmm? Victor, be serious. Nothing. There is a special item reflecting the absolute lack of any bequest to my former spouse, Nadia Fyodorovna Voronina. I would also like to come to the aid of my only son, Viktor Shulsky, by entrusting him with the use of my personal black grimoire, in the hope that he will be able to make good use of it. This is my last will and testament. Carry it out solemnly, though you may have found it burdensome. However, this last bequest poses a certain problem. Yes, it certainly does. And what is that, may I ask? I am not in possession of this grimoire. The late Mr. Shulsky used it up until his death. Yet no one left it with me after his passing. Meaning it's disappeared? Did father have his grimoire on him at the time of his death? It was only because of the grimoire that we could identify him at all. What actually happened? How did he die? A building collapsed on top of him. I don't know any other way of putting it. The grimoire. Could someone have taken it? Perhaps. In all that confusion? But why would anyone want Papa's grimoire? An ordinary person won't use it. Would the Tomato just happen to be passing by? Father had all his knowledge in there, but I don't know if it would be useful to someone other than him. I don't even know why he left it to me. I'm sure Stasio had a reason. A building? It collapsed on top of him? How? How did this happen? It was a day like any other. Papa had gone for his habitual walk. Every Tuesday and Thursday, he'd take a stroll to get some space, as he put it. When he didn't come back for a long time, I got the bad feeling something had happened. Then... We rode there together. An entire wall of a tenement had collapsed. There were three victims, including Stasio who had the bad luck to simply be walking by. To see him there in that condition, it's beyond description. Where did it happen? Where was this building? The southern part of Shudmieście, not far from the police station. Anyway, you can miss it. Of all the possibilities, this was the death that fate prepared for him. I foresaw a slightly more pleasant end for him, myself. I doubt even he deserved such a horrible death. Those might be the kindest words you've ever said on the subject of a father. How typical of a sort of person to keep a portrait in a study of a family that was only a family on canvas. 
Not long after the painting was done, he got divorced, ruined the Nijitsas, and kicked out his son. But there the portrait hangs, as if family meant anything at all. I don't know what exactly happened with Abauritsa, but I know that Papa felt guilty. You don't want to forgive him even now that he's gone? The dead need no forgiving. And as for forgetting, I don't know how. It's just a shame about the grimoire. What do you intend to do? And Mordechai Chayat. Could that be a lead? I don't think so. He worked with father, but he left more than a year ago. I don't know why. He was an assistant at our, well, my store. Do you know where I might find him? Sadly, no. Do you have any other ideas? Father evidently knew a certain Ivan Konechkin. Have you heard anything about him? Konechkin? No, doesn't ring a bell. All sorts of people came to Papa's store. That doesn't mean every one of them might know something about the grimoire. That's true. You've got your work cut out for you. I think we have to look for the answer in the place where it happened. With your sight, you can make out more in those ruins than I, or uncle, or detective could. This is a good lead, but is it the only one? And where are father's things at the moment? You're standing at the very center of his kingdom. Not everything has been sorted through yet, but you go right ahead. And the store? I should check the two. I've started stock taking there to distract myself, and I don't want you to go in there before I've finished. As you wish. Now at least I can see how little I know. Maybe these scraps of information will lead me somewhere. Well, now that we know what's got to be figured out, forgive me, my darlings. I'm going to give my old bones a rest. I'll see you out. Goodbye, Uncle. And, uh, Ligia. I'm sorry it happened this way. That I wasn't close by. The most important thing is you're here now.
How do you find our old stomping ground? Yes, I'm not too fond of this place either. This is where I had my last conversation with my father, just before I left. If you can call it a conversation. Can you see my dreams? Nightmares, actually. Ever since I decided to come back, I keep reliving the same memory. The Lone Shark Incident. I've been seeing his death more and more lately. I wonder if his shop is still there. Perhaps we should go there and check. Master Victor, let me guess, have you come for some hot cocoa? Would there happen to be anything stronger? I see you're all grown up. There's still a little homemade liqueur if Judge Voronin's not polished it all off. Help yourself. It's been an age since we've seen one another. I'm glad you're back. Mistress Ligia is really struggling with everything. Ligia won't open up to me, but how is she doing? She's having a rough time, the poor dear. Her heart is heavy, though she doesn't show it, but she's strong. She keeps her chin up and doesn't give in. And it's good she's got you to help now, Master. Only she started smoking like a chimney. She takes after her father, no question about it. And so, the great Stanisław Szulski is dead, crashed by a building. Can't say I'd wish a death like that on anybody. An awful death, sheer cruelty. Mr. Szulski didn't deserve it. Now all we can do is think back on what a wonderful man he was. That won't take long. So, this death, what do you make of it, Grzynka? I'll tell you in confidence, Master Shulski. Now, I'm a simple woman, but something about your father's death doesn't sit right with me. How do you mean, Grzynka? Don't you suspect some impure powers had a hand in it? Do you mean it could have something to do with thaumaturgy? That, I don't know. Look at us jabbering, while there are potatoes not peeled. Forgive me, Master. Another time, Grzynka. I'll get out of your way. Always ample work, but I can always snatch a moment for a chit-chat with you, Master. I'm about to go deaf. Answer, Victor! I know you're there! Hello? I talk here? Do you hear me now? Victor? Victor, are you there? Grigori? Yes. Victor, uh, where are you? 
on the other end of the line, at home, where the telephone rang. <laughs> Incredible. How did you know I have a telephone at home? Uh, something's interrupting you, Victor. I am telecommunicating with you to say I found lodgings here in Warsaw. If you need me, I'm by the cemetery. Uh, what number is it? Yes, yes. Seven Povaskoska Street. Uh, number seven by cemetery. Povaskoska. I'm glad. It's good to hear your voice. <laughs> it's good to hear you as well. Uh, goodbye. I, I want to end now. What do I... Uh, like this? Wonderful device. Remarkable. Hello? Oh, and now? Have you found anything yet about the Grimoire? Is there any way I can help? The trousers are... an original style. Until now, I'd only seen women in trousers in the East. First of all, they're practical. It's the 20th century. It's high time we started dressing comfortably. You've always been brave, never afraid of anything or anybody. Like when Mother almost had a fit because you dunked my best tie in hot cocoa. I didn't care that she was angry. I wanted to get you back for not wanting to play with me. Because you were being too annoying. You meant to say brave. By the way, Grazina still makes cocoa every evening. You can conjure up the flavor of childhood if you want. Is there anything else you want to talk about? What's next for you? You're in charge here now. Have you got some kind of grand scheme? A grand scheme? Well, for now, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Certain customers are unconvinced that a woman can handle running a business. What's worse, a woman without powers. You know what I mean. A thaumaturge at my side would shut them all up. After all, it's your heritage too. I don't know anything about running a company, but if I can help in any way, you can count on me. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I trust the smoke doesn't bother you. You used to detest the smell of tobacco. You'd hold your breath going into Father's study. That's true, but when I'd stay here, alone with Papa, and somehow over the years I got used to it. I don't know when I started copying him even. Daddy's girl. You were always closer to him. That's not true. I was just less rebellious than you, his thaumaturge son. Now come on, what else is on your mind? In Father's study I found a trace of a woman that I couldn't identify. Probably Svetlana Romyantseva. Where can I find her? When she's in town, she stays at the Imperial Hotel. She might know something that will help me find the Grimoire. Not so fast. To get in, you're going to need me and my connections. Svetlana is famous for her soirees where she hosts the Creme de la Creme of Warsaw. What's a soiree? How long did you say you lived with Mother in Paris? Just a party, if you like. Do you know what that is? Very funny. We could go together. How about you track down some evening clothes and I'll sort out the invitation. And I won't take no for an answer. Sadly, you never give me a chance. Unfortunately, everything in my wardrobe is antediluvian. I need a tailor. 
There's a shop at 11 Pružna Street that's fairly decent and quick. We also have barbers in Warsaw in case you want to do something about whatever you have growing on your head and face. Are you lost? Fuck. Don't try to be a hero, and it'll be all right. You're outnumbered. Quantity doesn't always translate to quality. Call the rest. We got one with a death wish.
Get off my lawn. Victor? I heard a noise. Are you all right? I'm fine. We've had a few unwelcome visitors. Burglars? What's wrong with this town? I'll call Uncle. There's no rush. I don't think they'll try to rob anyone any time soon. 